we're in the Southern Lakes region of New Zealand, is proximate to Queenstown, but sort of set away from the main sort of urban centre of Queenstown. The project sits on the edge of Lake Wakatipu. It has proximity to the Remarkable Mountains. It's set on a, a plateau that is sort of elevated from the lake edge. It sits within a broader curtilage of land. There is no proximity of any other structures. So when we're designing in these landscapes, the, the landscape is incredibly powerful. When you're trying to develop an occupation at a scale that feels comfortable for the occupants, there is a balance that you're always playing with. And so the house, in our mind, had to have a sense of opportunity for that view and, and capturing that view. But then there's also areas where we wanted to have a sense of removal of the view or reduction of the view. And it needs to be moderated and it needs to be sometimes taken away and then represented for its, its, its impact to be fully understood. We developed themes that were integral to sort of how we sort of see the building developing. Those included the landscape and the, and the importance of a building that sort of merged with the landscape. And the other strong theme was a sense of ruin, a sense of potentially historic occupation. We liked the idea that the building didn't get read as a strongly new structure. We liked the, liked the sense that it was embedded with the landscape and potentially was something that had been developed over time. Opportunity of the reflected landscape, the sort of the green roof, has a sense of being grounded at both ends. We love the idea of translating the landscape and lifting it for the internal occupation, but we were very mindful it had to be anchored and brought down and connected to the ground as well. And the opportunity with doing that externally was to also internally create volume and a sense of variety to the different spaces and occupation. So the client brought to us the, the concept of shaker design, the idea of these functional components of interiors that could be integrated within the building. And that theme was something that we, we loved. There was another opportunity to explore an interior occupation that had its own opportunities beyond the architectural strategies. The uh, discussion on types of furniture that would sort of be the, the backbone of how the internal occupation would sort of develop was a really strong theme that we enjoyed through our collaboration with the, the client. The main living space is considered as a peninsula, it is one space wide, that wraps around a protected courtyard. The courtyard has a strong center of gravity for the overall composition of the building on the land. It is the axis to which the public wings of the building are set, and is also the separation from the private occupation of the upper levels. So the opportunity of taking the bedroom into this elevated position was also to enjoy the aspect over the roof as a sculptural landscaped form was something that we wanted to enjoy. The palette of the building externally is really to reflect the landscape. The selection of the sort of final masonry colour and tone has been influenced by the, the rocks in the landscape. The specification of the planting to the roof has been influenced by the surrounding topography. The building in essence, looks to its perimeter and its natural environment for its key ingredients. And I think in landscapes like this, it is a sense of comfort that you can occupy something that feels as remote and barren as, you know, the perimeter of the building, but still have a sense of sanctuary and occupation. The aspiration for the building has been very strongly to integrate it with the landscape. The project, in our mind, has been achieved recently, but its development over time is one that we want to track and follow.